The much-hyped special election in Georgia's 6th Congressional District has arrived. With all the overwrought fanfare of a political moon landing, a nationwide superlative contest, and who can resist those, is on full swing on cable news tonight. Just how important is this special election? Well, according to the people you're watching, it's literally everything. It's the definitive referendum on Donald Trump. It's D-Day for Trump. It's Trump's last stand. Okay. <laughs> Deep breath, please. It is true that this election is partly about Donald Trump, and you can tell from the fundraising numbers, which are huge. This is the most expensive congressional race in American history. Almost all that money has come from angry liberals who live out of state. Marin County, Beverly Hills, Martha's Vineyard, that's who's paying for this contest. Democrat John Ossoff has outraised his opponent fully seven to one. Now, he's running in a suburban district that voted only narrowly for Donald Trump back in November. His opponent, the Republican Karen Handel, may be a remarkably impressive person, but she has shown no signs of that so far. In other words, this should not be close. Ossoff ought to be running away with it, but as of right now, he's not. He may still win, but not by a huge margin. Why is that? because Democrats still literally have no idea why they keep losing elections. If they did, they would have run a real candidate with a real job who understands the constituents he is attempting to represent. Instead, Democrats put up a 30-year-old semi-employed documentary filmmaker who can't even vote for himself because he doesn't live in the district. He's got a ton of trendy rich people positions on just about every topic. The abortion people love him. He's gravely concerned about climate and childhood obesity and the availability of organic kale. He thinks illegal aliens are noble. He went to the London School of Economics. He's super fit and way smarter than you are. We could go on and on. You've seen it all before. That's the point. Voters have seen it before, too. And outside of Brooklyn and the west side of L.A., they're not that into it. That's why Democrats keep losing. Why is it so hard? for the left to find candidates who run on issues that voters actually demonstrably care about. Joining us with the answer, or his sage view anyway, is Britt Hume. He is, of course, Fox's senior political analyst. So, Britt, it seems to me that this ought to be a much wider spread than we're looking at. Well, remember this, though, Tucker. This is Newt Gingrich's old district. This is this is a re very right? Republican district. And Tom Price, who is now the HHS secretary, whose seat this, is, whose seat this was, uh, won the last time out by 24 percentage points. So uh, while, the, while his margins over a period of time have shrunk, uh, the last one was pretty big. So this is Republican country, and all of the things being equal, you would expect a relatively easy Republican victory. But all of the things, of course, are not equal. We have a highly controversial president well, not now, at all. now sporting a 36 percent approval rate, and we have Republicans exactly. in Congress whom this candidate, Karen Handel, would like to join who have so far been unable to pass any of the major things that they promised. So this is not the most, uh, the most uh, opportune moment to be running for election to the House of Representatives as a Republican. And Ossoff, as you've noted, has, has, has uh, attracted a great deal of money. In fact, you know, you mentioned, Tucker, that, that this is the most expensive race. It is, like, way the most expensive race. The, mo the nearest one, this one right. cost about $50 million, in excess of $50 million. The, the, most, the most expensive one before this was five years ago, and it was only about $30 million. So we are, we are in, in the stratosphere here. So you've got a president under 40 percent, a suburban district, and suburban Atlanta is changing. And these are these are basically pretty affluent voters who trend Democrat increasingly. You've got a Congress that's wildly unpopular. The Republicans control it. You can't tell me if the Democrats hadn't put up someone closer to the mold of Jim Webb, maybe a populist in economics, maybe not so far left on the social issues. Why wouldn't they be, I mean, why would there even be a race? I mean, despite the fact that this is historically that Tom Price carried it, but why didn't they put up a candidate like that? Well, one wonders why. It's a good question. Um, I'm, you know, I guess there are people in this country and in the Democratic Party that look at a guy like John Ossoff and say, hey, he's pretty cool. Documentary filmmaker, young, presents a new image for the party. Um, he's been running, I might note, Tucker, uh, on, on fiscal issues as a conservative. He's worried about government spending, he says. So he has tried, after starting out as kind of a lefty, to tailor himself more to the, the, uh, the past preferences of this district. Um, and I, you know, I suppose you could argue that he's, he's run a decent race. Obviously, it's, it's close. He's, you know, he may, yell, may yet win it. The consequences of it, though, Tucker, I think, are what have been exaggerated here. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, 
you know, this is being fought as if it was decisive, as if as if the the political uh, outcome going forward into 2018 will be foretold by this election. Uh, these special elections are interesting and they're fun to cover, and particularly when we haven't had a race in a while and we're all starved to cover something. Um, but their record of predicting what's going to happen in the next round of actual elections, of, of, you know, scheduled elections, is pretty weak. And so I think, you know, whatever happens tonight, I think will probably not be not be necessarily any kind of an omen of what's to come. So is there a race between the end of the presidential race and the first congressional cycle that you think is a harbinger of the not way things that, are going? Not, not that I can see, but, you know, I haven't, I mean, I, I'm, just following these things over the long years, there's often excitement about some of these races. Um, you know, right. we've had a couple, and there have been some predictions that Democrats are going to reverse the tide. You know, Democrats kind of can't believe that their party's not really in the ascendancy uh, because they look at Donald Trump and they think, this man is an unthinkable president. How can anybody support him or his party? Of course, that's what they thought before the election. And, of course, they lost the election. Uh, they... Uh, they they lost control of the Senate, and but I still think they you know they look out across the country and they say who are these people? Why are they voting for these Republicans? And until they yeah. until they can answer that question to their to you know to in a way that makes any sense, I think they're going to have trouble recovering. I guess Ossoff has made a crack at it here, Tucker, by trying to pose as a fiscal conservative of some kind. But so far, that's about it. If you speak to the middle class, you'll win. I mean, that's my read. But what do I know? Britt, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. You bet, Tucker.